Hi, this is Brian Gracely. And in this video, we're going to talk about uh, cloud management and cloud operations. Um, this is a really, really big area because obviously, as we start to talk about cloud computing, cloud computing is not really about new technologies per se, but it's really about new operating models. And so uh, we could easily make this hours and hours of, of video and hours and hours of discussion of, of what this means. But I'm going to try and break this up into sort of two parts. The first part we'll talk about kind of the basics, the elements that are, are there from a technology perspective and kind of a, an organization perspective in terms of how things are managed. But then we'll also talk about, in the second uh, video, <clears throat> we'll talk about how the differences between sort of legacy ways of managing virtualized environments and how some of that's evolving. But we'll also look at some of the newer ways that people are starting to manage cloud computing environments, whether that's things like DevOps, which is sort of a new way of bringing together the development groups and the people writing applications and code with the op operations teams. We'll also look at sort of what it means to manage multiple clouds, because people will have public cloud resources, private cloud resources that want to combine those together and call those hybrid cloud resources. So we'll put that in the second part of these videos. So first and foremost, let's look at the really the basic things in terms of what people are doing best practices for cloud management and some of the things that are different. So again, we'll come back to analogies and pictures that we've seen throughout these videos to help uh, provide some continuity. The first thing is always comes back to the applications have to run on something. And in this case, they're going to run on infrastructure. And I draw infrastructure this way as opposed to specifically calling out um, you know, server storage network and so forth, because <clears throat> in cloud computing environments, we want to get the infrastructure as consistent as possible. It allows us to run multiple types of applications. It allows us to automate the underlying infrastructure so we don't have lots and lots of variation between them or variables to have to keep up with. It also allows us to put multiple applications on top of here uh, and move them, scale them in ways that, that align to being dynamic and being uh, you know, unique and fast for the business. So we want to make uh, pools of infrastructure resources, servers, storage, and network. And obviously there's technologies underneath that that make that happen, but let's just think about that as a pool of resources. On top of that, uh, we're typically then managing, um, you know, virtual machines. Okay, so we're managing this, you know, sort of layer of, of virtualization, virtualization, um, and we're thinking in terms of virtual machines. Now, again, we can go back to the argument that not all cloud computing is always virtualization, but in most cases, in many cases, that's a component of, of how this is done. So we're really managing how virtual machines consume pools of infrastructure resources. That's sort of that first layer of managing that we have to deal with, whether we're talking about an infrastructure as a service, um, on a platform as a service, or software as a service. And, and when I say we manage, uh, there's going to be different teams that have to manage those things. But somehow, I'm going to have to manage sort of the virtualization of the server resources to be able to contain where those applications run. Now, um, and obviously there are things like monitoring, logging, uh, troubleshooting, all of the things that, that go along with you know managing um, infrastructure. Okay. Now, the next thing to be able to manage is how do applications get created into this virtualized environment? And in some cases, if they're legacy applications, it's pretty simple. We're going to have a virtual machine. They're going to put an operating system on top of that, Linux, Windows, whatever it might be, and they're going to drop their application on top of it. But we're seeing new app types of applications being built, or even ways to look at older applications that can be uh, built differently for environments like virtual desktops, for streaming desktops, and for new applications where instead of just having uh, a VM, an operating system, and the application, sometimes the application is actually made up of multiple pieces. And we can, we can manage this uh, in variable ways. So you'll see sort of uh, composite types of applications. So that happens sometimes as well. And so we're managing here at the virtualization layer with pools of infrastructure. We tend to manage here at the application layer and we're going to have sort of levels of consistency of OS and the VMs. Um, there will be you know, groups that, that manage that, make sure it's consistent, make sure we've got standardization for patch management, security, and so forth. Um, and then 
Beyond that, so now we've got applications that are running, and we've got applications that are running on our infrastructure. Uh, hopefully we've built the infrastructure in a way that is dynamic. Uh, capacity can be added, capacity can be removed, capacity can be moved around in ways that uh, down here, down below into here, and as we move across here, we can do this in an automated way. And again, we want to be able to automate how applications get deployed. So sort of the next layer of management that tends to get talked about a lot is what's often called sort of automation, uh, provisioning, and orchestration. And all of these things involve the ability to take uh, a request to build an application, a request to uh, deploy an application, and, and all of the elements that are involved with that. So whether that's requesting infrastructure resources, being able to make sure that I'm integrated with my security uh, systems and compliance systems, then I can authenticate those systems properly, that I can you know, log them and track them and do all the things that I've got to do for chargeback and for billing and other things. All these things have to happen just to be able to get the application to come up and run and make it available to the end users in a way that I can manage it. So what uh, automation, provisioning, orchestration, you'll hear a lot of these types of, of terms. Um, this is an entire layer that is all about trying to build automation, scripting, um, some workflows, uh, basically the capability to, um, to walk through a process, go from step A to step B, step B to step C, build independencies so that when this happens, these three steps happen. And when that finishes, it moves on to the next stage and these three or four things happen. And it works us through a workflow that says, you know, start here, come here, get the application images, come down, get the operating system images, put it on a VM, request a VM, under the VM request certain amounts of infrastructure to be able to support those things, make sure that we're compliant with this, that we're compliant with this, that we're compliant with this. The end result being, boom, 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 the end result being over here that we've got a working application. And so this becomes really that next really critical piece of management, if you will, or operations and management in order to get cloud computing, you know, sort of working. And again, this is whether this has a a layer of platform as a service in here somewhere, or this is for software as a service. Again, getting all these underlying components working, doing them in an, in an automated way, being able to repeatable, do it in a repeatable way, do it in an automated way, do it in a way that can be managed consistently. Um, those become the key pieces in terms of how to manage this. Now, all of this assumes we're doing this within a single cloud, if you will. Now this could be uh, an infrastructure as a service cloud as a private cloud, it could be an infrastructure as a service cloud as a public cloud, uh, it could have elements above here that make it platform as a service or software as a service, kind of irrelevant. Uh, there's some details in there, but kind of irrelevant. The next thing that we'll want to look at is, well, what do I want to do if I want to manage applications across multiple clouds? And this is where we start starting to see uh, more and more, we're starting to see companies deploy a layer of sort of multi-cloud management. And uh, there's not really an official name for this, but I'll just call it multi-cloud management. And really what it is, is looking at how do I deploy an application, have a centralized console, centralized visibility, centralized operations to be able to say, if this is a cloud here, and I've got external cloud one, external cloud two, and then maybe this is cloud three, how do I deploy consistently across these? How do I have visibility across them? How do I know when the cost of this one can compare to this one, can compare to this one? How do I audit resources across all those things? So this becomes sort of that fourth type of element that we're starting to look at from a management perspective. So I've got managing sort of virtualization infrastructure, managing how I get my applications deployed, managing how I automate across all of these, and then finally managing across multiple clouds. And so lots and lots of technology under the covers for this, lots of vendors and lots of open source projects that are looking at working on this. But if we start with this sort of framework across those key points, um, those become very, very good ways for us to look at how is cloud management and cloud operations um, happening and, and where do we wanna look at putting resources, learning new skills, and applying the right technologies to solve um, problems at each one of these levels. So we'll jump into more about the evolution of where this is going, um, some of the new trends that are happening in the next video. But thanks for watching this introduction video about cloud management
cloud operations.